Can I call you Rebebe? You can call me Rebebe. <laughs> Sweet. Yes, you All do. right. We're at Winter Nam 2019 with Rebebe. Rebebe is in the house. Rebebe in the house. Uh, picking his brain a little bit about what makes Rebe so great, uh, such an accomplished guitarist. So if you don't know, you see him on the internet, there's a lot of videos of him demoing some excellent gear all the time that always sounds incredible. The great thing about him is, be is he's so uh, versatile in playing styles and techniques. He can go from Stevie Ray Vaughan to technical math rock all the time. So, I mean, it's you're a very accomplished guitarist, and so you catch our ear, you catch our eyes, where it's really exciting to sit here with you. Thank you so, very much. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy to be sat here. Oh, great. It's, it's cool, man. Great, great. I paid him to say that, but I can't reach my wallet. I'll get it out <laughs> in just a second. Okay, so... So for a lot of people know who you are, some people are just getting acquainted with you. Tell us about maybe the last five years of your career, kind of what you do, uh, you know, where do you spend most of your time, uh, what do you spend doing right now? What do you do? Massive question. Good question. I know. If you could just sum it five up. Five years about is a long time. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Okay. Just kidding. F five years ago, uh, what... So we're, if we're on 2019, it was 2014. So I was just starting up uh, Tosca, which is the band that uh, most recently released an album. Okay. Um, I think, to be honest, five years ago, I wasn't doing loads of YouTube stuff. That's, I had a YouTube channel because I met Rob Chapman years ago. Yeah. And he said, set up a YouTube channel. But I, I think around that time, I was doing it sort of inconsistently uh, and was focusing more on being in a band and wanting to write music and, and going yeah. on tour because that's what I did before YouTube. Yeah. And that's always what I wanted to do is be in band, write songs, uh, you know, just play music live. That was, the that was the main thing. Sure. So five years ago, I was putting in a lot of time writing material for Tosca with the guys and getting that off the ground and then doing the same thing with the band with the Chappers, which is Dorje, just doing a lot of that. And then over the last few years, I guess I've been trying to focus on bands, my YouTube channel, uh, myself as a guitar player, and uh, yeah, all the, the, you know, yeah. it goes into that, you know, just a bit of everything. Videography, a lot, yeah. Dude, that's a lot to do. Yeah, so, I love it though. So you, that didn't all happen overnight, so what we see you today, just shredding, making incredible music with your albums and with your videos, but what we don't see is a lot of the time spent practicing alone in the bedroom with your guitar play, you know, uh, listening to tracks or whatever. So, so how did uh, how did you start, and and what were some of the things that that you know took you from playing a G chord into really playing some uh, stuff that that you would consider, uh, you know, like, ooh, I'm really impressed that I can do that now, <laughs> you know? I, a lot of my I started playing guitar seriously when I was 16. Yeah. So like 15 and a half, 16. I, I was a drummer before that. I drummed for from like eight years old to then. Sweet. It was a skateboarding injury oh. that caused me to not be able to play drums. Yeah. Uh, so I couldn't play drums and I started playing guitar and I think it was an immediate, I had rhythm with the yeah. right hand from, from being a drummer. Yeah. Um, and so I think it, it just caught on quite quick. And then, so yeah, I spent many hours from then onwards uh, in the evening just practicing and, and learning songs. I think the first album I tried to learn was Master of Puppets by Metallica. And yeah. the second album was Permission to Land by The Darkness. <laughs> so it's a bit of a contrast. It's, a, it's great. Those are good. Those yeah, are good I ones. mean, there was some great blues licks in The Darkness stuff. For like sure. the first album's great, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, l a lot of time spent doing that and then I got a book. I got like some random instructional. In fact, it was a, it was a, the difficulty level was masterclass. I picked up the wrong one in the shop. Yep. I went to go and get the beginners one, and I picked up the masterclass one. And then I t got it home. I was like, oh shit, this is, this is really hard. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. And my dad was like, well, you've no choice. I paid money for it, so you better get on with better it. Better learn it. Yeah, don't waste my money. So after after that, it was just, oh yeah, I can play some nifty stuff like from just spending hours over my favorite songs and and like extreme Nuno Betancourt, all the rhythm stuff like. Yeah. Yeah, and so and then that didn't mean anything until I discovered bands because they yeah. were all great for technique and listening to the, these guitarists be very musical, but 
to actually create the music they're playing over was the thing that I didn't realize I cared about so much yeah. until I discovered Incubus. Incubus was the first band for me um, that I discovered that yeah. wasn't given to by my dad with like Floyd or yeah. Zeppelin, whatever. Which album? Uh, it was Make Yourself. Make so Yourself good. was the first album I heard and went, oh yeah, this is really sick. Like yeah. this is, it, something about this gets me really excited and then I became obsessed with Incubus and then through that, loads of other bands in many different genres. I think the guitar has allowed me to be influenced by a lot of different genres. Like, yeah. People listen to all kind of music, but when you're a guitar player, you can be like, oh, I want to do a bit of that, and but that might be blues, or I right. want to learn a bit of that, and some guy's playing shred fusion, or yeah. and you just dip in and out of all these different genres without totally. realizing. Dude, I'm really glad you said Incubus, because I feel like they get left out a lot of the time. They, they really do. About, I mean, because, like, sure, it's, like, awesome, like, rock, just to, like, bang your head to it in your car, but, like, like the technical proficiency and the music theory that goes into a lot of their songwriting is, like, mind-blowing. And, and bands that are writing in a way where like, you don't know what's gonna happen next. I feel like are, are some of my some of my most inspired. Like I'm inspired when I listen to them. And Mike's a great parts writer. That's and, the thing. Yeah, he's so underrated. Like he's in, he's yeah. really technical and he's incredibly creative. Yeah. And it was that mixed in with the, the rest of the band that all those the depth. I think it was the musical depth that really got me. You know. Totally. You're like I'm really emotionally invested in this song. Because for some reason it's just so moving. I don't know why. Yeah, just, they were great band. That's really good. So, out of all the things that you do uh, that you're involved in, which one is the most life-giving? Which one do you really just like love to do? Is it touring, uh, making videos, studio work? Uh, which do you think, or is it a mix of all of them? So, uh, I think with questions like that. It's the first couple of images that jump into my head. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I go, well, that's obviously what it is because something just went, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and those two images would be when, it, when I'm on stage. Yeah. So just any given gig. If I'm on stage playing music, I, that's the top of the list. Yeah. Um, I think that is for many musicians. Like if you're playing a gig and people are getting into it and smiling and having a good time, that's immediately life giving, you know? Totally. And then the second one is those moments where you're in the studio and you're looking around whilst it's being played back to you and you're like I'm in here doing this thing yeah I'm like I'm here with my friends and like I'm listening back to something we did and that's that's so cool yeah, yeah. that's really awesome so you there are a lot of young aspiring guitar players the next Rebebe is out there <laughs> you know uh, what's this will be the last question but what's one thing uh, that you would tell either your past self or an aspiring person who wants to make a living doing music what's one thing that you would pass on to that person I guess I'll just aim it at like a, a, from a playing perspective of being a musician yeah um, I would say listen to yourself as much as you listen to the rest of the band or oh, the good. musicians because too many people too many musicians are focused in on exactly what they're doing, and so if you're trying to imp if you're trying to jam with people or write songs, those parts and those that interaction is not going to happen anywhere near as smoothly if they're not paying attention at least a little bit to what you're doing to yeah. contribute to the sound, whether that's just jamming with friends or writing a song. Yeah. Uh, and then on the other side of it, I think it's just really important to so soak up as much different type kinds of music yeah. that you can because it affects the way you then it affects the way you output the music. Dude, that's great. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna go and do that now. That's great, thank you so much. Thank okay, you. so people wanna go to Spotify and listen to your music, tell them where to go. Okay, you can go on Spotify and my band Tosca, which is T-O-S-K-A, is on Spotify. Uh, my other band, Dorje, is. Uh, and then I have like a little EP of stuff I've done myself, which is literally songs that I'd written for gear demos. Yeah that I then compiled and put online because a few people asked me to do it. That's awesome. So it's not really a solo thing, but it's there if you want to listen to it. Awesome. Go do that right now. Thanks for being here today. Really appreciate you. it. You're an inspiring guitar player. You make us all better. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Peace.